I know one thing. <clears throat> one thing that makes me just completely concerned about WWE's product and the way it is and why I don't like it and why a lot of current fans of the product, old school fans of the product, and new fans of the product like the children or like at least 20-something-year-old females or at least some dudes that are trying to get into the WWE, they have a lack of identity. And it's shocking to understand why I still cover this every, nearly every single week. I don't think I missed, I, I don't think I, I called last week. I did. Anything else, it was just a crappy ass promo with Braun Strowman un, uh, suffering an injury after last week's assault. It was, it was a brutal ass assault. They did the same thing to Elias Sampson when it was Bobby Lashley versus Elias. Baron Corbin would switch up the matchup to be a uh, false count anywhere, and they would just utilize this to end up. Why, why aren't you making fucking Braun Strowman, uh, Bobby Lashley, or Drew McIntyre strong? I mean, the only person strong right now in the WWE is Drew McIntyre, and he's never even gifted a championship opportunity. We know he won the tag title, but that was with fucking Dolph Ziggler. Anything else, <clears throat> he's never put up to the Universal Championship threat. He never has a loud mouth to say on the promo. He beat Kurt Angle. It's like a 50-something-year-old Kurt Angle that you beat. So, I really want to understand. What makes Drew McIntyre a major threat in the WWE? Except you needed Baron Corbin and Bobby Lashley and a little bit of a lesbianic midget out of fucking Leo Rush to beat the fuck out of Elias Sampson. Why you still needed to go three on one to beat the shit out of Elias Sampson? Why? Anything else? All you have to know is Bobby Lashley won. And this was before the promo that brought up what the hell they did. Now let's go on to the next matchup that we're about to see. It was, of course, the Lucha House, the Lucha House Party, and Lucha House Party rules versus the Revival. And I have to say one thing before we continue with this: Why did they? Why did the Lucha House Party bring pinatas? Not only are they luchadors, so not only are they small, not only do they have generic music, they still count lucha, lucha. Because yeah, I don't understand. And they're holding pinatas. It's it's almost like crime time when they had the Tims, the loose jerseys, the baggy pants, they sag a bit. At least they were over. At least they were over with the fans. They were underdogs. They were always championship threats back in the day. Sure, if you didn't like it, maybe you thought that your gimmick was a bit too offensive. To ur to the urban common black person in Brooklyn, because I think that was usually it. Yeah, and you had a black guy in Tim's baggy pants, baggy jeans with a jersey or a leather jacket with the pillies and shit. Yeah, that, that that's usually what you kind of. Plus, it was two thousand, like two thousand six, two thousand eight, where of course black men still dressed like that. So, yeah. Lucha House Party won. This was a choppy ass match. The rival should have won, but it was a, literally a three on two affair. So, anything else? The, the show was already in a honky start. Then we had a promo off fucking Nia Jax declaring her women's opportunity. She is big. Why do you still need Tamina here? Why do you still need Tamina over all this bullshit? Oh, because she's also Samoan, she's also related with you? Fuck you. I hate Nia Jax. She seems like a asshole stepmom that wants to fight with any retarded kid that's like, fuck you, and can't even enunciate fuck. Really, I hate Nia Jax. She seems the person to be like, you can't make fun of these kids with the mental disabilities, because imagine, no, fuck you. You're an asshole. 
You look like you used to teach sped children. There's nothing interesting about Nia Jax. She decided to bring up this. They always, Michael Cole always tried to hype up these wrestlers thinking that there's something interesting about them. Nia Jax is not intelligent. She can't wrestle that well. She relies mainly on her size and nothing else in her wrestling ability. She doesn't have to do elbow drop. She doesn't have to get in the top rope. Just see her matches and then look how sluggish she is. Look at Umaga. A man that looks like she's built like him. Oh my god, Umaga, when you see him go into the ring, when he's facing off against guys like John Cena, Jeff Hardy, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Randy Orton, you see him face all those dudes, and Umaga's always beating the shit out of those guys, and you see like it's real. If you see Umaga across the street, you want to make sure you stay away from him. Nia Jax has a pretty face and an ugly body for no reason, and she has nothing. It's better if she doesn't talk. There's wrestlers that you think, oh, they need a little bit of mic work. And you don't need always mic work to show that you're a good character. Well, you could understand Umaga, because he spoke Samoan. And mainly he still kicked your ass. All he needed was a good manager. I think Nia Jackson needs a good manager. I don't know why she looks like she's in a relationship with fucking Tamina. And then she's going to face Ronda Rousey at TLC. And all this brings up is just pointless confliction of Ronda Rousey thanks. It feels like you can't make unique or, you know, interesting matchups in the women's division now. You did Elimination Chamber. You did Money in the Bank. You did multiple Battle Royals. You made a female Royal Rumble. And all of that crap was forgettable. Nobody in this year, sadly, didn't even know Oscar was the female Royal Rumble winner in all of this. Carmella won the Money in the Bank briefcase. The first Money in the Bank briefcase. She had to win it twice. An Elimination Chamber, I don't even remember who wins. I just remember those because those were controversial wins. Of course... It's the first Royal Rumble for women, so how can I not pay attention? And Carmella won it twice. One on Money in the Bank and the other one on SmackDown. Stuff like that last year, if I was uploading it that year, I would be screaming most of the time. Because 2017 was such a shitty time for wrestling that you would rather be better off just sucking a dick at New Japan and Ring of Honor than a lot of indie promotions that you don't know shit about the wrestlers except, you know, a few of them do super kicks. And this women's division is so lack of effort, so lack of identity. It just brings up the point of why do you even care? We had women even main event Monday Night Raw, SmackDown, all this crap. And it proves nothing. It proves nothing why I should watch these women, why I should buy their merchandise, why I should buy their toys, why I should play them even in a fucking video game. And how in the fuck they work. They're not interesting characters. There's nothing fun about them. Sasha Banks lost legitimacy as soon as she started fucking with Bailey again. I find Nia Jax would be cool because she didn't talk, and she always makes her hands do the talking. That's something that you should see off a big wrestler like her. As soon as Tamina, I didn't even know she was still fucking alive, and she gained all that fucking weight over the years. Because if you see Tamina back in 2010, Looks completely different. Looks completely fucking different. Now she's fat nearly the size of Nia Jax and can't wrestle. Can't do super kicks. She literally has to do this. You need to hold your knee up for support so you can do your super kick. That Emperor Moon match was so fucking cringe. It was so sluggish. It proved one thing, that a smaller wrestler has to carry you into a wrestling match. There's something wrong with you, and I'm shocked that they didn't bring you back to developmental. And I had a problem with this in, in the WWE draft back in 2016, that I think they should have implemented NXT as a demoting system, like certain wrestlers from NXT or still wrestlers in the main roster can go to SmackDown and Raw, and the wrestlers that haven't been that active, or at least 
been regressing in popularity or at least in win losses should be able to be demoted and go to NXT and try to see if they can build themselves up before they go into the main roster. I think that'd be a better idea. But nobody wants to hear that. They just want to hear about, oh, uh, women's evolution. We need more women in the roster. Let's implement all these stupid stipulations. House of Horrors match. No one gives a shit. Oh my. Okay, next topic. Authors of Pain had Bobby Lashley and Chad Gable for the NXT, for the WWE Raw Tag Team titles. It was a it match. You had Chad Gable getting a few momentum shifts. Somehow, Authors of Pain, they were like the most dominant team in NXT. And you had problems with like a, over a 150 pounder and Bobby Roode. Even though we understand if you watch TNA, uh, he has tag team success. But nobody knows that in WWE. And he's mainly in WWE a single competitor. So I'm shocked that authors of pain were dominating. So, it came with Drake Maverick interrupting a match by showing vignettes and fucking up with his robe and pissing on it, even though he has multiple robes. The, the, the robe is literally. Bobby A. Roode's entire character. So he pissed on it because he pissed himself in Survivor Series. That's continuous running joke. Even SmackDown bring this up. So, yeah, others of Pain would win and capitalize on it with her finisher, and that would be it. Next up, we had Amber Moon versus Alicia Fox. Why was Kurt Hawkins there? No one cared. I and mean, why is Alicia Fox getting lighter? She looked so light skinned. The match was so shitty and forgettable. Oh my god. It was eh. It was an eh match. It was just showing how Amber Moon just continuously wins matches, but nothing really, you know. Brings her up as a character. She was feuding with Nia Jax and Tamina until that got scrapped. So she's, now she's doing regular filler matches. These are filler matches. Nobody has feuds and nobody else has conflict with each other. They're just filler matches to get a win loss record. That's literally it. They're filler. Oh my god. Next up was Jinder Mahal versus. No way, Jose. Even though Kurt Hawkins was there, even though we know Kurt Hawkins would lose, they just bring No Way Jose to have a forgettable match with Jinder Mahal, where it was regularly rest holds in a few ish spots. There was a cross body that was so fucked up that it hit Jinder Mahal right in the face, and they didn't set it up properly. Jinder Mahal would win. There was a few good moves off <clears throat> No Way Jose. Anything else, Jinder Mahal wins. You, you, you guys still know that he was WWE champion, right? Jinder Mahal. Yeah. Sorry. Then we had a retarded promo of Dean Ambrose. I, I don't know if this is supposed to bring up Roman Reigns with the leukemia and shit. And this is also to shame Seth Rollins, treating him like he's dumb. Even though he's been in the Shield for about, like, 2012 to 2014. And you're not telling me now that they think that you were a psychotic mess? And now he's, like, fucking pissed off for no fucking reason, man. Fucking, they treat me like I'm dumb, yeah. It's not like I... Spewed mustard and ketchup to grown men. And then put green slime in a in Seth Rollins' briefcase. And randomly assaulted him for no reason. Well, he did, because Seth Rollins capitalized that he was going to be part of uh, the authority and crap like that and become a champion. What did Dean Ambrose do with stabbing his back on Seth Rollins? He has an Intercontinental Championship match. So I think he took, like, a needle to the hip. 
And this was just to succumb to uh, the open challenge with Dolph Ziggler against Seth Rollins, and say it would be, it would be worse. They, this was a weaker match than the match they had at SummerSlam for the Intercontinental Championship. You forgot that these guys kept wrestling each other, and they continue wrestling each other. So why not give Seth Rollins the win? Why not? Because I'm just saying now, because wasting my time watching the same two men fight for months, for months. It is now November. It is near December. It is 2019. It, in a few weeks, in a, in a lot of weeks, still, still, I don't want to get that because it's still 2018. These guys have been feuding since August. It is near December. Please stop letting these dudes wrestle. It's the same thing. So, but somehow off the fake a sleeper hold that, of course, everybody, even if Santino Morello was back and it was a squash match, not even the sleeper hold would be fucking Santino Morello. So, really, what's the point of still having the sleeper hold the zigzag if you still use the. Fuck, I forgot what that move was called. It's still. It, everything gets a near fall now. It's just it's like watching this bullcrap is completely pointless. If it's just gonna be near fall after near fall, we get it. These guys have endurance, but it's bullshit. Like a super kick, a superplex. They doing this crap is completely pointless. If it's not gonna get even a, a three count, it makes tag team matches look half ass. If you see tag team matches, these guys just stay still while they get pinned out and shit. So it ended up with a falcon arrow off a of superplex. You know what Seth, Seth Rollins kept, kept doing 24-7? So yeah. Plus I'm doing this while I'm sick. Seth Rollins win. This was the best match in the show. So, yeah. Next up was a little bit of... Uh, what a talk show with Alexa Bliss featuring Bailey and some and Sasha Banks. This is just for the lesbians to just get assaulted. This is just for them to get assaulted by Alexa Bliss, even though she can't wrestle. It was Alicia Fox and Mickey James. That's just a grunt now. Mickey James is just set her side poop. Mickey James just to get, you know, she used to be feuding with Trish Stratus. And Lita, Melina, Michelle McCool. I'm just bringing up all this shit in her resume that she accomplished. And all the women that she beat, because these are, a few of them are now Hall of Famers. And Mickey James is close to that. A Hall of Famer, and she beat all those Hall of Famers. And now, she's a side chick for Alexa Bliss, and this is doing nothing. So whatever, we're just gonna skip through this because obviously I do not care. The main event is your fucking GM that yet again assaults Finn Balor after their match. And it was it was a choppy mo match because it, it was a few good hard hitters. But I think Finn Balor won this. Yeah, it ended with uh, Corbin winning. And that's pretty much it. That's a Monday Night Raw. That's a Monday Night Raw. And nothing could, you know, be more embarrassing than seeing a show you've been watching for over 10 years become a medio mediocrity. Just forgettable matches that you won't care about. A title defense that wasn't even big. They don't even allow TLC matches because they expect the WWE to be like the NFL and you suffer CTE and most of this bullshit. You, even though I understand most of this crap can take a toll to you, but Jesus Christ. It was bad. The wrestling was weak. I don't think any promo. Dean Ambrose promo was shit. Almost everybody. Elias Samson. Elias Samson and Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler match was the only good thing that I expected to be good. Because obviously it had to be. So. 
pretty much it. Can't I can't bring myself to keep doing this every single freaking week. If it's just gonna end up to the same crap every fucking week. Baron Corbin says a promo. Stephanie McMahon might star tonight that night. Then a few matches, Finn Balor. There's no big stars. There's no big stars. Roman Reigns used to be that star. They should have had Samoa Joe stay in their main roster. Drew McIntyre should have made a vent and faced off against Finn Balor. No. There's nothing. There's nothing in the show. And it ended with fucking Bobby Lashley and this boy toy fucking fluffling and shit. And then we have Drew McIntyre. Do, making it like he done something. He didn't even wrestle. Dean Ambrose didn't even wrestle. What the fuck was the point of this entire show? We understand it's three weeks until TLC. But we don't give a fuck. Who cares? The show is shit. Oh my god. I, and I expected this to be alright. Thank you for watching. So, Raw gets a another three out of ten.